Cowboy Hotel. Let me tell you two spooky folk tales from Shinston, West Virginia. The Blue Boy Hotel, about the infamous murder hotel that wasn't a folk tale, based on a book, based on reality, as well as possibly based on West Virginia's most notorious serial killer. Both stories share general location, perhaps even the same property is also from the same time period and might have even been part of the same story based on music's timeline. Old Gopher About 1890, John Sweeney, a prosperous cattle buyer and owner of one of the biggest farms in the northwestern Shinston area, lived in a large two-story brick home in Shinston. One day he heard of some fine cattle in the lower part of the state of West Virginia for sale at a very reasonable price, and taking some money from the bank he set out to buy them. He had told all of his friends wherever he was going, so the whole town of Shinston and the outlying communities knew of the proposed trip. What they did not know was the amount of money he would have with him. Mr. Sweeney started on his trip about the first week in March. Ordinarily, he should have been back in about two weeks or a month at the most. When he had not returned in about six weeks, his friends began to worry about him. They wrote letters to the stockyard where he was to buy the cattle. No one at the stockyard had ever seen Mr. Sweeney. The news shocked the whole area. What could have happened? On the 30th of April, a strange occurrence was reported. Ben Ashcraft said he was driving his team of horses across the stream that went through the Sweeney place. When he got midway of the bridge, a black figure tried to stop his wagon. The figure jumped on the wagon as the horses fled. It told Mr. Ashcroft that it would not rest until the day that Mr. Sweeney's murderer was drowned in the stream. Then it disappeared. From then on, the same thing happened to almost every man that went over the bridge. Whenever young boys would cross the bridge, they would not be able to eat for two or three days if they had seen Old Gopher, as the ghost was called. These were not the only mysterious things to happen. Strange things were seen at the Sweeney house. Cows would sail around the house. Old Gopher and a witch would fly around in the trees. Men would walk in line, carrying their heads in their hands. Books would move from one table to another in the library. A man with a knife in his chest and a chain around his neck would lie in a, a chair screaming. No fire or even a pipe could be lighted on this property. Every time anyone would attempt to set foot on the bridge, he would see old gopher crying in the middle of it. One day a man who had never been seen by anyone in the area was found drowned in the stream. Around his neck were wounds like those that might have been left by a vampire. That same day, the Sweeney place mysteriously burned down. The fire destroyed the entire farm, although it never so much as burned a blade of grass on neighboring farms. Old Gopher had avenged his murder, as he said he would. The Blue Boy Hotel This story is said to happen between the years 1870 and 1895 on Main Street in Shinston, West Virginia. The setting was a two-story hotel called the Blue Boy Hotel, which had a saloon in the front and a pool room in the basement. Behind the hotel was a huge barn where all the livestock was kept. Bill and Melvin Everett were the owners. These men would take in many guests during the year, most of whom were rich or well-to-do. If they had very large sums of money, Melvin knew it because it was a house rule for the people to tell him how much money they had. He would go get them into poker games, playing with a large sum of his own money so that the guests would keep playing. He often arranged to have a man or group of men come in and hold up the game. He would never be suspected because he played with a large amount of his own money. Now Bill would court the women that came to the hotel. If they were rich, he would usually marry them. 
After a couple of weeks, he would kill his new wife and bury her under the barn, saying that she had left him. The two brothers also wrestled cattle and hid them at a farm in Adamsdale until the brands were changed. Bill would then sell them to cattle buyers for a very reasonable price, but after each sale, he would try to kill the buyer, take the cattle, and sell them again. After a life of swindling, cheating, wrestling, and murder, Bill died around 1890. Every night after Bill's death, Melvin would dream about all the money Bill had. In the dream, Bill was hiding his money, but Melvin never found out where. One night, as Melvin was getting ready to go to bed, his brother's ghost appeared. Bill told him to go to the old abandoned Lucky Lady Mine, and then he disappeared. Melvin ran to the mine and got the money packs. Before he could reach the entrance again, he was covered by a slate fall. The money was found beside Melvin's body. Inside the packs was a note signed by Bill saying that if anything should happen to Melvin, the money was to go to Melvin's wife. Not wanting the hotel and unable to sell it, Mrs. Everett had it torn down. When the barn was torn down, the bodies and skeletons of the murdered people were found. When he heard what had been discovered under the barn, Eliza Driscoll of Bluefield, whose daughter had disappeared while she was in Shinston, came to town. Believing that his daughter had been killed by the brothers, he went to see Mrs. Everett and courted her. As a form of revenge, he took her out one night, shot her, and threw her body into the West Fork River. Every night thereafter, Mrs. Everett would appear to Mr. Driscoll. He would see her walking house and going down the street. One rainy night, he decided to walk down near the river. Reaching the river, he began to cry from shame. The ghost of Mrs. Everett was always with him, walking alongside him. He jumped in the West Fork River and drowned himself. The bodies of Mrs. Everett and Mr. Driscoll were found the next morning by the riverbank where Mr. Driscoll had jumped in. The ground was wet, and Mr. Driscoll's footprints were clearly seen down the riverbank. And alongside his footprints were a set of woman's footprints, a set like those that have, could have only been made by the shoes Mrs. Everett was wearing. Historically, Richard's father, Nathaniel Everson, was one of the early settlers of Bell Vernon, Pennsylvania. At least 30 of his children moved to West Virginia. His son, Richard, and family established a farm and residence on the Big Elm Farm in Harrison County, West Virginia. Here we go. And somewhere in here was the tree before they tore it down because it was diseased or to make room for a trolley or to make room for the train or whatever reason it is no more and somewhere over there was the Big Elm Farm Down there's the river, the West Fork River. Oh, there's the site of the Big Elm, okay. Near Shinstown, modern Shinston, named in honor of Levi Shin, the first settler there in 1778. The farm was so named due to the largest elm tree known to exist in a nation once grew near the West Fork River, just north of Shinston, as documented at the Centennial Exposition, a major stage road passed between the elm and the Everson's house, a large log house built in the early 1800s.
1843, probably acquired at a county sale to settle an estate, Richard Everson bought 292 and a half acres and over the next seven years purchased 135 and a half adjoining acres. He and his large family lived there until he sold the farm in 1868 to the Hood family. During and after the Civil War years, the Eversons were southern sympathizers procuring horses for the South, possibly through nefarious means, in an area that greatly aligned with the northern cause, in a town that rarely lit its streetlights in the mid-1800s. The author of the book, Granville D. Hall, journalist, businessman, and politician who helped found the state of West Virginia, serving as private secretary and secretary of the state to the first governor of West Virginia. He wrote the novel, The Daughters of the Elm, which purportedly fictionalized the exploits of the notorious Everson family. Family lore held that the first publication of the novel, The Daughter of the Elm, used the Everson name for its characters, and that after publication, the Everson family was so incensed at their unflattering and often criminal portrayal that male family members threatened the author with harm unless the name was changed. The threats worked, and author Granville D. Hall changed the character's surname to Hesmond. It must be remembered that The Daughters of the Elm is primarily fiction, although some of the incidents described definitely did take place. Characters in the novel and their real-life counterparts were documented by local historian, the late Jack Sandy Anderson. The Eversons came to leave the Big Ben farm and travel north approximately five to ten miles, where they established a grist mill along the West Fork River in Marion County. This is part of the old community of Everson. The area around the mill experienced growth and became known as the small village of Everson, West Virginia. The 1870 census lists Richard in Marion County with an occupation of Miller and Cooper. It is fascinating to contemplate what was fact and what was fiction. However, after nearly a century, it would be an impossible undertaking to separate the two, as there are few reliable records of the time. There were no arrests, nor legal proceedings, and those in any way involved are long since dead. Around this time, John Sweeney, old gopher, was murdered around or possibly on the Big Elm farmland owned formerly by the Eversons. As for the Blue Boy Hotel itself, I reached out to the Harrison County Historical Society. They informed me that it was called the Blue Boar in Hall's book, but in reality was the Red Lion. It was raised in the 1890s and the Carter House was built there for John W. Carter, who had owned the Red Lion. In 1926, the house was dismantled and a store built. From what I can find, the Eversons never owned it, and I'm not sure when the Red Lion was built or if it was even around during the Civil War. Furthermore, in that area, there are no reports of murderous wife killers. This is where Ruth Ann Music's story parts ways with the book. While Hall had the Eversons as general thieves and murderers, by the time the student that had taken a story to music, it had gotten distinctive new qualities. Bill Everson had taken on a more sinister character. He now hunted, toyed with the affections, and murdered lonely women. This William Everett in music story correlated to the Harry Esmonds in Hall's story and Jack Everson in real life, but music's character was more like another Harry.